All right, joining me now is Sky News host Liz Storer and former, former Labor Minister Graham Richardson. Welcome to you both. Great to see you, Graham and Liz. Hello, hello. Now, Hi. let's start uh, with the big news of the day, the Daniel Andrews resignation. Liz, how do you think Daniel Andrews will be remembered? Do you think it will be mainly for the controversies uh, from his time as Premier. Absolutely. And if he thinks he's skipping out the door while during this period where we've seen no accountability for firing rubber bullets, for, for the longest lockdowns in the world, for any number of scandals that he and his ministers, even when they were facing the relevant bodies to give answers, were, I can't remember, I can't remember. That was their go-to line. I think you better think again because people do have long memories when it comes to the trauma that they've suffered under his leadership. Financially, the state's never been in worse shape. When he became Premier, there was in 20 billion debt. Now it's 170 billion. People have suffered under his leadership and he doesn't just get to waltz out the door. But I love that he's done it with a final parting lie. Promised seven, almost seven million people, I'll go full term yes. at the election. It's just turned around like it, oh, it doesn't really Ten mean anything. Later. I've changed my mind. Changed Never my mind, mind case Sarah. I don't think people will forgive him for that either. Yeah. All right, Graham Richardson, very divisive political figure is Daniel Andrews. People kept voting him back in, though. But do you think that says more about how weak the opposition was than, you know, the anger over some of the decisions he'd made? Well, I think you've got to remember, too, when you say people keep voting him back in by bigger and bigger margins, he had massive margins. Uh, he won seats that Labor ne never dreamed of winning. And so you've got to say that this bloke uh, got into the fabric of Victorian society. People loved him. And it doesn't matter what anyone says, people loved him. And that's why he kept winning elections and winning them by bigger and bigger margins. Uh, so he'll go down in the pantheon of Labor, his, Labor heroes, and so he should. Mm. Let's have a look at The Voice. Warren Mundine gave a speech at the press club this afternoon. He said that we don't need The Voice, that we don't know what it's capable of doing. He accused the Yes campaign of building a case based on a pack of lies. Have a quick look. The Uluru statement couldn't be further from the idea of reconciliation. The full manifesto is steeped in grievance. It sees Indigenous Australians as trapped in victimhood and oppression, not free or able to make their own decisions. Self-determination self is an unrealised aspiration. This is a lie. What did you think of his speech, Liz? Absolute gold from Warren today at the press. Uh, it's, it's an unpopular truth at the moment right now that if you are an Indigenous Australian in modern-day Australia, you have every opportunity to succeed. You have every opportunity to thrive. There are government bodies, there are organisations, etc., and so on, whereas everything that we've heard from the Yes campaign is insisting that there's still a gap to be closed here because we haven't done enough. Mm. But it's, it's simply the government covering for their own ineptitude. How has not enough been done when we spend almost $40 billion every single year on roughly 3% of the population? How have you not managed to close the gap, government? How are you somehow turning this around on us? And what I can see is even if the voice did get up, I think that would become the new scapegoat because the government, instead of having itself to blame, would simply say, oh, well, we're following advice from this body. So if we're not smashing our KPIs, now it's their fault and they would simply have somebody else to blame for the same results time and time again. I love that Warren used the word self-determination there because I believe we've already arrived mm -hmm. at a place in Australian history where if you're an Indigenous Aussie in Australia, this comes down to self-determination. You want housing, you want to go to uni, you want to go to school. There are any number of funding bodies, government bodies, Indigenous organisations that are bending over backwards to ensure your success. 
Richo, Kamal, the legendary singer, has also backflipped on his support for The Voice. First he said he didn't support it, then he said he did, then he changed his mind a couple of days later on live television on the project. Uh, they were scratching their heads, you know, they couldn't quite handle his backflip. They probably wouldn't have had him on if he was, uh, if they'd known he was back to being a no voter. Uh, can you relate to changing your mind on The Voice? Well, I, I think... Um... I can relate to changing your mind on just about anything because everyone's got a right to do that, surely. Um, you know, if you think about something and you decide you were wrong in the first place, well, you change your mind, obviously. I, I see nothing wrong with that whatsoever. As far as I'm concerned, um, I, uh, I don't like the voice particularly. Uh, I'll vote for it because I'm a team player and my team are voting for it. Yeah. And what do you think? What's your prediction for... If the voice is defeated, Richo, how do you think that's going to affect Albanese's political fortunes? I don't believe it'll affect it much at all. Uh, I don't think people are engaged with this. This is not... I think they, they regard this as an intrusion into their normal life. I don't think that they... They're, you know, I, I don't sit at dinner tables and hear people arguing about the voice. Really? Just, That's just... all that people talk about at the dinner tables I sit at, <laughs> literally. Oh, we've, we've had a lot of Jewish dinners in the past, you know, couple of weeks. Rosh Hashanah, <laughs> starting of the fast, breaking of the fast, and all anyone wants to talk about is the voice. Well, I, I'm sorry, I don't, we go to very different dinners because I haven't <laughs> heard anyone raise it. Not a soul, not one person I can't has get raised any other topics me. in. <laughs>